Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to put on the various transducers. Um, the two main types are inserts and headphones. And they have pluses and minuses, and we'll talk more about that in EP, ABP and clinic. But there are very specific ways that you should put them on. And in the time of COVID, when we don't want to chill here in people's faces, there's even more specific ways to do it. So let's talk about headphones first. Take it as given that I've done all my hand sanitizing and stuff. You want to sit or stand behind the person and don't grasp them by the waist. That could be sexual harassment. <laughs> uh, you want to hold. Let me, let me help move Kimar here real quick. I forget. I have little short arms. Like that looks, a real adult could have done that. I cannot. Uh, <laughs> so you want to stand behind the patient. The right hand is going to hold the right transducer. That Which is, is red. Right. The left hand, L, L. Um, some of you that helps, it doesn't help me because it looks the same either way. Um, you'll hold it in the blue left, red, right, Republican, blue left, Democrat. I'm still <laughs> not asking about your politics. Mine's red, right, round, whatever's left over is blue, whatever helps you remember. So, but things that don't offend people don't to get remembered as well, like <laughs> mildly, mildly. So you want to hold it and you need this to be fully extended, right? Fully extended. You get at eye level and you want to match this diaphragm to the ear hole like that. And you want to get close and look and look, you see how close I am? That's how close you need to be. And then you want to double check that this is perpendicular to the floor. Now look at my bottom fingers, look at them. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. They are on, not the metal, but on the thing. And my thumbs are here and I'm squeezing them together at the same time. See, I'm neatly and evenly on both sides so that it draws the pinna up. You don't want right. to fold the pinna down. And I've had people tell me their hands are too small. Dr. Burns and I may have the smallest hands on earth In audio, and we can do it. <laughs> I do. We I have, have very tiny hands. Look am, at them. They're so sad. Look, look at, at those little, little baby hands. hands. I wear <laughs> like little kids gloves. Me too. That's how little. I wear extra small or small nitrile gloves. We'll never be amazing pianists, but it's okay. And if for some reason, and I have to use special short stubby impression syringes. That's how small my but hands But you are. should be able this to do fine. that. Now, if for some reason you buck the curve, you can start an even small amount. An but it needs to be amount. even because the idea is that when you push them down, they're going to push down simultaneously. And it's going to cause these ear cups to go parallel. So when it's sitting, they're sitting like this, right? That's how it feels. And when you're pulling up together, they just kind of straighten even out, and out and it does this. You should feel them literally pull apart and everything go a little straight. Now here's the thing. This looks easy. This is something that everyone Hard. struggles with. Everybody. Everyone does. Now removing it, it's also important. Yes. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that again. So Again, we're going to put it on. One of you at least will eventually skull thump somebody with these. Oh, Try totally not to do that. So, so even, 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 tight. Can you see I'm kind of trying to do it slow, how the cups kind of evened out, mm -hmm. right? We're sitting here. Now, real people's ears move more and different than Kimar's do. So, what Kimar's a good patient. Is you hold one side firmly grasp the cup firmly pinch it a little bit pull it while holding this see my left arm is tensioned pull it off pull it off around the back notice the cord was always behind it was never in front of the neck and the reason i'm saying careful skull thump uh, can you show them kind of how tense that is and this is a loose one, by the way. Yeah, this is an older one. But you see how tense that is? It is possible to literally let go too soon if you haven't got the correct tension. And then this poor little guy will have a nice little bruise on his head. <laughs> so we want to be kind with our removal. And then immediately, when you take this off, you will wipe it down with a sanitizer before you hang it back up on the wall hanging. 
immediately. There is no waiting to do it right in front of the patient. And every booth has some sort of wall hanger. Like this one has this little Odometrics one. The ones I believe in the other booths are literally labeled which one is your inserts, which one is your whatever. Yeah. The ones that are, try to follow that just because it's easier for people to find what they need quickly. Um, and it helps keep your cords untangled. And if you notice the cords have tangled in an appointment, when you clean after, untangle them. Don't leave them that way, right? Yes. I guess while you have that, we might as well do this one too. Um, so this is the bone oscillator. This is also a be careful you don't thump. And I'm not going to flick it because I actually have like broke my fingernail trying to show somebody something. And this one hurts worse. <laughs> it does. So again, from behind the person... You want to literally feel, and what you're feeling, everybody reach up there and feel your own, the bone, feel it. I'm waiting Feeling. On you. I'm okay. feeling for you. Feeling. So touch it, and you're looking for like a point in that mastoid bone, and you're looking for it, if possible, to not have fat or hair over it. Now, I have tiny little baby freak ears, and so mine aren't. So with mine, I have both hair and fat. Because the promontory for mine and oh glasses is really close to her hairline. It literally is my hairline. And also it's gushy here, right? She touched. I have some fat like That's right okay. on it. We all do. We a lot of people do. <laughs> and apparently it's illegal to scrape the fat off and then like flatten their bone. I've been assured that I'm not legally allowed to do that. But that's no what surgery. You're, doing. you're looking for that. And then what you want to do is holding each side firmly. Oh, notice how this twists and pivots. This is like all the twists and pivots. Right? Every direction. Every direction. So what you're going to do is look for that prominent mastoid part. You do not want this to touch the pinna at all. Not even a little bit. You hold it on, kind of put a finger in between come over the top of the head and you're looking for it to be on the cheekbone. You don't want it to be too close to the pin on to the tragus on the other side because if it closes it it's bad. And on a real patient you wouldn't have let this up. Right. You would hold this the whole time. Now and this then, being said, this is such a beautiful fitting she's doing. And it, you see how she's got it firmly tight. on the top of his head. It's nice and, and tight. Then I twist this so that it follows the angle and curve. You want this to be running kind of parallel. It's plastic, it's not gonna stay. It's not pretty. gonna stay because oh it might. Oh, see how oh, beautiful it I did. have this? Okay. Um, but you see how pretty this is, guys. What I'm gonna tell you is there's gonna be some people with some weird heads some weird heads and and so it's not possible so here's the hierarchy of factors that's impo important the most important thing is that it's on the mastoid bone the second most important thing is that it's not touching the pinna mm -hmm. the third most important thing is it's not closing this and not making them scream in pain some people you can even put it yeah. on their temple and it's okay that's not your default. You're going to check while touching it. Is that okay? But third, again, not closing this off. Partially not on the temple. Check to see. Fourth is perpendicular to the ground. And fifth is how tight it is to the head. Some people you have to like be yes. a little bit up to find a spot. And you don't often have to, but if you had a patient, let's say that had a very small skull and this is not tight enough, it is possible to take foam. Although in the era of COVID, COVID you definitely are going to have to throw this away. Use, you're going to use gauze. Gauze is you're a good idea. Something gauze. we can throw away, but essentially something that can act as an extra piece of tension that mm -hmm. also usually will help hold it in place. But we don't want to do that unless we have to do that because you're changing the way this was intended and the way it's calibrated. But if we have to, we have to sometimes. And again, on the mastoid bone, not touching the ear, the best way to do that is to run it parallel to the shape of the pinna. Mm -hmm. And then the Over last here. thing I will say is sometimes these like to move, because especially on big heads. So after you've placed it, stay a second. Stay and look. Uh, and, and you'll have patients be like, uh, this is moving. If that happens, mm -hmm. go in there and replace. But hopefully, you will not have that issue. So, um, and then to take it off, again, all of this is happening behind the patient, looking at eye level. You hold a hand on it. 
you need to get your finger in between their pinna and this so it doesn't snag because sometimes I've had them slip and if you're only going to grab it like this, I've had it jump into their pinna and it's uncomfortable. So both fingers grasp over here firmly, get under it and pull with a little tension, but not a lot. Don't go over the top of the head, swing it around so that it can close. If you go up over the top, that's the easiest way to smack somebody in the face. Yeah, essentially so, you'll accidentally slide. let it loose and it'll go. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible Again, feeling. Sanitize it before hanging it on the wall. There are other headphones and other um, bone that we can talk about later. The high frequency headphones are pretty easy. We're going to chill on this. Now, what colors? Which hands? Red, red is. is right. Red right. What's for the blue? Democrat. Wait. <laughs> Whatever's Long left thing. over is blue. Long doctorate. <laughs> also, if you're a plumber, again, if you're coming to us from a plumber background, red is not left. It is right. Like, yes. realize your mind. That took me a while. So, first things first, again, behind them, because you're going to be all up. See how in-person space? I do not want them to sneeze in my face. I don't want to sneeze in theirs. Clip it to a collar, to a seam, somewhere close. Clip yeah. it. I will tell you from personal experience, I have had patients who did not like that. Uh, tough uh, nuggies. Tough nuggies. That's really it. Um, so This I, one is a little bit broken, so we're going to pretend and I literally, is it really? Mm -hmm. I literally just say to the patient as I'm doing it, I'm going to clip this here so it can be held stable. If there's something, that's a t good tip. If there's something that you need to do, don't ask, can I? Is it okay if I nope, say, I'm going, I'm to. going to? And I then will. I want you to notice this. You see how this is very flexible? When she initially did it, it literally was going up his nose. Oh, did it? <laughs> so when you're doing it, turn the direction so it's away from the, the face. The ones in the booth I do are like curved already to go the way I want them to go. So, what you do is you attach the straw of the insert onto the nipple. Yes, we call them nipples. They huh? are nipples. And these come out if you're not careful. So, when you're being, when you're taking them apart, make sure. So, you put it yes, on. Yes, that's an extremely important thing. I know it seems They're $10 small, each. But if you lose that, we can't, the next person literally can't be tested until we get another nipple to put in there. And so uh -huh. they go on pretty much just like this, um, the ear mold tubing does. And see how I crunched it? I can't use this one yet until it fluffs up some. So you do one and then you put it on on the other side. Sometimes I get them on fast and I don't crunch them too much. But you do like that. Now see how it opened back up? Now, hopefully some of you guys have made paper flowers before for like floats. Because I know we got some Texas people. And yes, mums and floats are very Texas. So ask somebody <laughs> if you're not sure. I'm not but, Texan, but I get it now. But the straw is a little bit rough. If you touch it, it's not. So you need to be careful. Don't roll it back this way and expose that straw where it's going to hurt the patient's ear. Don't squeeze anything too quickly because if you put a crease in it, it won't fully expand. So you start at the bottom and slowly all the way around, do a little bit at a time and see how it's like a paper flower. And then you do like that. And somebody here is going, but wait, she's covering the hole. But see, it keeps opening itself up. And she is. But the thing is, is once it's in the ear and it expands, it's going to open that hole back well, up. Well, not just that, because, ah, that's what I forgot to do. You need to, before you put anything, look in the ear. You need to see shape and direction. So this ear goes forward and a little bit up, right? So... You make it, and so when you go in and it touches the canal, it's going to force it back again. We're doing two competing frictions is what's happening. And indirectly, by covering that opening, you're preventing wax from getting into the mm -hmm. actual space where the sound needs to come through. And I will tell you, if you ask in public, people will argue with you about this. Um, so... It's not, there's not, I'm not aware of any study that's looked at rolling patterns. I'm just telling you, this is from my personal experience with 
discomfort. And if their ear looks too curvy, I will not use the inserts. You know, you not everybody's good for everything. So again, we're from behind, we're at eye level. We're going to pull the ear up and back and then we're gonna shove it in with a forward twist and kind of twist it forward a little bit. Now, this is not good deep seal. Kimar's ear is not actually deep, deep enough. enough. <laughs> so this is not how it should go in. But you see how I kept the ear pulled back to straighten it and I kept pushing forward and a little bit of a rotation? That's the motion you want. And what do we want it to look like? We want it to be flush. So I have freaky baby ears. So I have to use the PD one. So you we're gonna put it in my ear. And yes, I can do this to myself. I can do otoscopy on myself. I could probably do an ear impression in like autobot placement if I was feeling froggy with it. We'll come over here because Kimar scares me. Kimar's worth more than my house is. Kimar's expensive. So you put this on and for the peed one especially because there is very little fabric. Fabric's not the word, foam to foam. cover it. So, there is very little to work with. So, I'm going to really carefully do, and I have to get it down pretty tight, otherwise even this one won't go in my ear. And you want it all the way in the canal so that it's countersunk. It's a little bit lower than the concha. So, I'm going to pull my ear up and back. And, am I almost there? I can't see you because your finger. There we go. There you go. Am I Hang deep on. enough? There she is. See how it's a little bit lower? And even looking at this piece, you see how the nipple itself is pretty much sitting in her antitragal notch? Right? That's the kind of space that you're going to want to see it. And patients will not like this. No, they they'll don't. go, are you shoving it into my brain? Or, <laughs> you scratched my eardrum. Or, it's not comfortable, which is why I made such a big deal about angles because you can minimize the discomfort it will be uncomfortable period it is insertion depth though is extremely important to accurate test results so make sure we do to that take it out you need to open the ear up so that it opens see how much my ear still has it compressed down with my little ears and then take this off without touching and throw it away yes. see how it's grody now Here's an infection control weirdness. Sometimes of sometimes with testing, you need to take them out, put them in, take them out, put them in. The perfect, perfect world of infection control is each individual time you take it out, you throw it away and you get a fresh one with proper hand sanitizing all in between. The reality is these cost about a quarter a piece. So people reuse them. So be, if you're gonna reuse them, like between doing masking a knot with bone or something like that, or switching sides, A, if don't ever switch side if there's any possibility of a fungal infection, but this is too gooky to reuse. You see it? That's not much, but that is too gooky to reuse. And definitely wash your hands or hand sanitize after if you reuse. Yes. I'm just trying to like, that's not best practice. I'm being honest. I just want you to know what's best practice, why it's best practice, and what's real life, and how far you can skate. And in my opinion, if you're using it on the same person, on the same side, and it's not in a way or a history that made you uncomfortable to touch it, and you can wash your hands after, yeah, okay. I think that pretty well covers I think this. so, too. All right. Thanks, guys.